Okay. And but <clears throat> what I would add, I would add a new letter. It's definitely a good idea to add a new letter. Uh, okay. But before we add them, we, we still have these zeros and ones in there that we have to get rid of. So we're going to do that adding. That's a good idea. But what about these zeros and ones in the middle? So let's break it into two. Call it uh, S goes to G and H and symbols. And then zero. All right, right. That's good. But I want to I want to first get rid of these terminal symbols before I do that. I mean, because because that because this early step that I'm suggesting is much easier than what you guys are suggesting, which is the right answer. But before we do it, why don't we just say Z goes to zero, O goes to one, and <laughs> O stands for one, O N E, right? And then every place you see a zero and a one, you're putting capital O's and capital Z's. So now, now you don't have any of these issues of having terminals in the middle. Now everything just looks like capital letters. Now we can do your trick, right? So. <laughs> Z-A-O-B. Now this looks kind of just like this. Now, in fact, like <laughs> Zaub, twice the caffeine, <laughs> half the intelligence. <laughs> Zaub. <laughs> and it'll sell, too. That's the thing. Um, now all the examples can be divided into very simple categories. Either you have productions that are too long, or you have productions that are too short. Or you have productions that are. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do the long ones first because they're easy, or at least easier. And both Doug and Joe have the right idea there. What we're going to do for long ones is we will kind of group them. We don't have to group them two and two because that's specific if we happen to get four. But we want to make it more general grouping. But basically, what we're going to do is. Think of this as two things, Z followed by AOB. And the AOB will be represented by some new letter that we've never seen before, say M. And M goes to AOB, and M takes the place here. Why not have a, a non terminal point to two of the first two symbols? To do a two and two? To two at a time, since that's our limit. No reason. This is just systematic. I, it, maybe we could do it that way. If there is a reason, I don't see the subtlety why we can't right now. So we re repeat the process. Now OB gets blocked up. We'll call that N. N gets to be OB. And we're done. This is S goes to ZM. M goes to AN. N goes to OB. And make sure that these M and N appear nowhere else. There can't be any connection with them in the rest of the grammar. They are simply placeholders to make this turn into things of two. And you're thinking, well, we're not really doing anything. And that's true. We're not. We're just moving things around so that we can always assume that we can do this and we can have two non-terminal symbols in every production. And if the other steps were just as easy, it would really be easy. But the other steps are a little bit harder. So these we're going to leave. These long ones we'll take care of. The terminals that are in the middle we can take care of. The things that are hard, that are left over, are the E productions and the unit productions. Because those you can't just group together and pull away. And they do have semantic meaning. And we have to capture all their semantic meaning. So now we have M as AN, but S is still, still has to be Z, O, Z, M. And it still has, it has all the, we haven't lost any meaning. OK, so far? All right, so now I'm going to concentrate on how we take care of E productions and unit productions. And here there are some subtleties. And I will start with hiding the subtleties completely. And you know what? Our book completely hides the subtleties. In fact, he, he doesn't mention them at all. If you actually tried to implement the algorithm he suggests and wrote the program, there would probably be a bug in your program that you wouldn't find until somebody typed in a particularly nasty, sneaky, context-free grammar and your program would bomb because he doesn't mention it. But you know, he's right not to mention it because it is, it's just ugly and, and it th takes away from the main idea. But I'll mention it after you get the main idea because I want you to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we? Here we go. Let's say we have a production like this uh, ZN. O, N, Z, 
and another production like this, n goes to the empty string. Let's say these were the only productions in the grammar. We'll isolate a, a little magnifying glass on this picture. We would like to get rid of n goes to the empty string. We would like to cross this out. But we don't want to lose any information that this production gives us. So what do we need to do not to lose any information and still be able to cross this out? What we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we went to every other production in the whole grammar where n appears. And we make n disappear. We do the substitution in advance and leave all the possibilities intact in advance. What does that mean? In this case, there's two different ends. So here's what we add on. The first one can disappear. So A could go to Z, O, N, Z. Zons. But in this case, N can only disappear. There's not enough. I know, I'm right. I'm just, I'm, right. Wouldn't they just, wouldn't they have to, all of them disappear? So wouldn't A have to go to Zaz? Okay. All right. I mean, it, it's a very, it's a fragment of the whole gram. I'm just focusing on the one part. So imagine that other things are there. Don't, don't think this okay. is the whole picture. What else can happen? The second one could have gotten. This, this is something you do when uh, non-terminating symbol repeats itself. Or is this something you do when? This is something you do with every single e production. You, okay. you take the e productions. We're getting rid of. We're getting rid of e productions now. I'll summarize all the steps at the end in an orderly way, but. We talked about how to get rid of long productions. Now we're talking how to get rid of E productions. Here. Actually, long productions is what you do last. Long productions. E productions you do first. And unit productions you do second. We did this first because it was the easiest one to explain. Now we're doing e-productions. You take every single e-production. In this case, there's only one that we see. You go to every other production in the whole grammar, namely just this one, because it's the only one I have on the board, and you substitute for n in every possible combination, n goes to empty. So you get zons, you get znaz, and you get zaz. And you need all three of those. If there were three n's in a production, how many would you add? No, no, two to the, two to the third, because it's 0, 1. But the empty string you never add in, so that takes a pair of 1. And the original you don't add in, because it's already there, so you end up adding 6. Here we added. <laughs> <laughs> you are clever. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Everybody get that? That's more or less it. You go through all the different e-productions. For each one, you go through the whole grammar, make your substitutions, and then get rid of the e-production. Goodbye. Same thing if s had an e-production. You do the same thing for that. If s goes to e, go through all the things, substitute, then cross out s goes to e, and make this thing so that you don't lose the fact that s can generate the empty string. So if s goes to e, you have to do that. All right. So that's the basic part of this stage. But I think it's a good time to look at the subtlety here, because otherwise you'll forget what's going on. Not you personally, but one might. Here's a made-up grammar just to point out the subtlety. It's not an interesting grammar, and it's only a fragment of a bigger grammar, but it will point out the subtlety. Let's go through our algorithm, pretending we're the machine on this, and see what happens. Who wants to start? We're doing e-production still. E still. Okay. We're, gonna, we're still here. We just want to see if there's some subtleties. Mm, right. Who wants to start? So we just, go ahead, Chris. We just have to. Assume that x can go to e, so along with 